Hello, this is Alekius, and welcome back to episode 6 of Automation Kiev Motors. Where off screen, I've taken a chance to look at the numbers, I've decided to take some risks, but I decided to put some work into it. Uh, really looking at our, our markets, where the demographic size is, how many can we sell total. What's the market awareness like? What are our demographic budgets like? Pretty much getting a total overview of, of everything. That uh, we can definitely design a new vehicle. Because I want to open up another factory. Oh yeah, I forgot I created this because I was looking at numbers. The fruits of my efforts. This monstrosity. I didn't do stats for all of them because I don't care. I did it for markets sizes of a million or higher. And what this is, is it's all of the types of cars and how many, how big the market is in Duluha and Archana, what the budget size is, not the plus or minus, the average giving a market size and adding those up so we can see how big is the market for a family car huge family budget huge heavy utility eh, not so big light sport minuscule so with that in mind Oh, and I spent a little bit of time just jamming these out really quick to have a quick reference, basically, over on my other screen. So yeah, we're going to go crazy, and before we have even released the drumstick, we're going to start developing new vehicles. First up, I want to hit this family, family budget, uh, five to nine seats. Now, with the budget where it's at, and especially wanting to hit the family budget, we're probably going to have to target the five seats and pick a body that's relatively small. We do want this in all markets. That doesn't matter to me. Uh, we don't have a model name yet. And we have a few new models to choose from, which is nice. Um, I'm kind of curious as to whether this micro vehicle is even going to fit five people. More than likely, this is what we're looking at for that family vehicle. And uh, what other models have we had? This was the last model top of the list previously. We have a good sized sedan, probably to seat like nine people. I might try to do a city car and then put the family budget in that. I might try to do the family car in this one. Budget is not very big for these vehicles, though. What's the difference between this one and this one? Okay, this is more of a, a sedan look. This is almost a hatchback. Yeah, just a little bit of a styling difference. Do we have other choices? Actually, that almost looks like a regular sedan. And, and coupe. And wagon. That would actually cover a score of family vehicles. Whereas these don't have coupes. But they have a variety. We have five door, three door. Five door, three door. Three door, three door. 
These ones are a little bit more streamlined. These ones are tiny and boxy. The cargo volume is not a ton. Okay, Fisher Cut Bait. Think. I think for this, we are going to go with this for our typical family vehicle. Oh yes, we have, have new choices. We want this for mass production, so we're going to need the steel presses. Engineering time-wise and familiarity, we're going to go with ladder. Nice steel is tempting. And costs are higher. Well, let's look at it this way. It's more expensive. Not surprising. Front longitudinal placement. Solid axle coil. The semi trailing arm. Max suspension offset, production units. Very compact though. I mean, the engineering time is not huge. We could definitely get more comfort, more compactness. Production units are higher. I think I'm gonna go with solid axle coil on both. I'm gonna need a new engine. I don't think I can use the I can use the an existing one, but I'm not going to be able to do it's our yeah pre, uh, iron aluminum. That's our our crazy one. I think I am going to do a new engine project. I'm going to do inline. I'm going to do four. Might leave it as a two liter. Concerned about how expensive it'll be, and we'll take a look. Uh, before I get too far, let's do that. And I want to look at our other engines. So we have our original engine. which I can't look at the cost of, because we're doing a facelift. Outstanding. It's kind of good, going to compare costs, but I guess not. We have our engine. Ooh, we can actually start doing forge. Lighter weight, less material cost, marginal increase, and um, production units. Same for the heavy duty forged. That might be important for the other ones. I'll also open up forged pistons. Compression, we're going to aim for eight. Cam profile, leave it alone. E Ooh, deco. Or DCOE. Forget what it stands for, but we're gonna have to compare that. Number two, we wanna lean it out. Initial timing, leave it. Shortcast. First flow muffler. Okay, knocking off the bat, so that was a little too ambitious.
So we're looking at a cost of approximately 617. place to look at that really that is frustrating because I want to look at the costs of these things before to compare before I commit uh, we definitely can't handle too high an RPM with that born stroke Before I do that, why don't we do it here? We'll shorten it here. That'll eliminate the valve. Should have eliminated the valve float. Or thought you know, normally um, you can eliminate valve float by reducing the bore. Interesting. Might be the valve brain on the model that is limiting that. Or we need a um, need a uh, additional valves because the valves are basically too large. But decreasing the the or should have fixed that anyways. Hmm. Curious. Well, you get to see me struggling through this anyways. Uh, we can eliminate it by dropping the RPM limit. We don't have a lot of familiarity with DCOE. And it does not help too much. Well, actually, lock it, switch it, and then pump it up. And no, it's, it's not as fuel efficient. Thought it might be. Where to go from here? I do want to reduce the bore and stroke. We do an 82 by 82. We'll get that float. And that's, that's definitely the top end that's doing that. We need an overhead cam if we want to push the RPMs too much further. Let's take a look. Definitely reducing down to 8282. That gives us a 1.7 liter. Is that different enough from the others? 1.6. One point seven total, and then eighty one seventy seven. We want to go that route, or possibly even a, a longer stroke, like we did with our first engine. Yeah, yeah, I know I've already completed. Maybe trying to keep a two liter engine just with a longer stroke. Which I'm going to push it to the limit here because I want to look at this. Um, lengthening the stroke and shrinking the bore is going to make the engine a bit more um, efficient. 
because that longer stroke captures more of the energy, and smaller since the bore causes it to shrink left to right. Which is why I'm kind of exploring it. You saw the power curve changes. Efficiency was no better. You see a lot of the numbers improve except for the performance index. Lighter weight, more reliable, it's smoother. Yeah, smoother. Fires less cooling because it creates less heat because it's smaller. Material cost is less. It has a lot of these benefits, but it's going to reduce this uh, top end RPM because that, let's basically, I drop engine and the front cover. As this stroke gets longer, this crankshaft is spinning at a higher and higher rate. There's more chance of problems occurring, stress fractures, things like that. So this RPM limit has to come down or you have to increase the quality of the manufacturing, get finer tolerances. So kind of comes down to what kind of RPM do I want to target? And how extreme do I want to go with getting this engine to where it's at? See? So we could do a direct acting uh, cam. Which, going back to here, that's this guy right here. Is these doodads. These uh, lobes push down on the the actual valve. So you have the, this is the head block. You remove that, here's your valve, and the lobe actually intersects and directly touches the, this valve striker, pushing the valve down. Whereas the overhead cam, you still have the cam, they'll have the lobes, they push up on this rocker that that pushes down on this valve. Part of the difference is these go straight down into the cylinder heads. These come down at an angle, allowing you to kind of optimize the, the location and size of these. Whereas these are kind of limited on how close and how big they can be. Whereas you can better use that circle that you have at the cylinder head. Curiosity. I don't want to remove the block and look up at the cylinders. Or valves. Interesting. Four valves. Just curious what the cylinder heads look like. How much they did with it. Brings us down to 5,800. We still have a two liter engine. Very limited on RPMs, but that's okay. We're not looking for a high revving sports vehicle. And we've minimized the material cost. Actually, you know what? Let's stretch it absolutely to the limit. We were pretty close to anyways. Well, no, that's an extra, an extra 4.2 millimeters. Pretty significant. Brings us down to 5,600 RPM. Minimizes the cost of this engine. Makes it less sporty, but eh, that's all right. Okay, no, no. We should have been limited much sooner. Or 
go with a 92.5. I forgot I had shortened it on uh, the screen, so then the numbers we were getting. 92.7. Means we have to increase the bore to compensate. Get that in the ballpark. Oh, nailed it. There's our new 2 liter engine. Or block. I haven't finished the engine. The bore increased. We have uh, stresses. Okay, we need to shorten it just a hair then. At least if we want to keep it at uh, 54 RP. 100 RPMs. Eh, we'll just shorten it a little bit more. 53 RPM limit. Gotten rid of our valve float. All right. Oh, drop it down to here. How low can, how efficient can we make this before we start getting diminishing returns? In the 20 to 30 range. 30 is what I usually target, just because it's easy number to remember. Gives you a little bit of power. Oh, switch back to a standard. Reduces those service costs. Then our ignition timing. Though before I optimize it too much, looks like it's going to be a 70 horsepower engine. Let's shorten this up some. Now we're starving the engine, but getting some scavenging effects from the size of the exhaust so it hurts our power really jams up the fuel efficiency pump this back up and of course that puts us over and i think the only thing we have left to do is to hold this bring it up one That's better efficiency and performance. Hold this engine. And this will go too far. Uh, even more efficient, but we're really starting to starve the power. So let's revert. Almost want to push more power out of it. 65 is not a lot. A lot of our power is on the low end. I mean, it's a cam profile 30. Not entirely surprising. Bring this back up. How's our exhaust? Our exhaust is now too small. That's an extra 5 horsepower. That's about where you want to be is or yes, we took a drop in fuel efficiency once I tweak things. It'll probably be like 15.8, 15.9. But you have 0.9 or less, you're really starving the engine. 0.95 to 97 is really what you're targeting to get that scavenging effect where uh, the exhausts coming out of the pipe. So this cylinder fires, all this exhaust gets pushed out, and as it's getting pushed out, the one of the other cylinders will be a different part of the cycle, and one of the will also have a valve open, and it'll just 
the vacuum created by this going through the pipe sucks the exhaust gases out of this cylinder as it opens up. It creates this, uh, this vacuum effect that helps clear the cylinders of extra exhaust gas. If I'm explaining it correctly and I understand it right. It's not necessarily true, I'm not an expert. I just think I know a thing or two about engines. So that's why I'm increasing the exhaust just a hair because that airflow restriction. Just a bit too restricted. See, and that brings us back up to 15.8. We'll hold that. Uh, what's that? 52? If it look higher, I doubt it will be better. And it isn't. Then we'll hold the engine and go lower. I also think will be too much. Actually, better. A little dip in the power curve in the center, putting the ignition timing that advanced, but gets us an extra horsepower. Gets us better low end band, and it helps with the fuel efficiency. I'm I'm really liking that. Now the other thing I wanted to explore was what if we look at a DCOE, which will give us less fuel efficiency, increased three horsepower, better power throughout the band. I say we keep it as is. 77 horsepower is plenty. I actually don't think so. I think it should be more like 90, but it's a family car. We're supposed to be keeping it cheap. Take a listen to it. Sounds like a family car. sounds the amount of effort the developers put into getting the engine sounds right in this game is delightful oh i'm missing wonder the power seems low all that optimization i forgot to increase the bore on this screen since we increased it on the other one there we go that's closer Better fuel efficiency, significantly better power, and uh, yeah, our exhaust. That's right at the limit. If I increase it, we're going to drop a bunch. Do get four more horsepower. We're coming to the limit of the intake, which I think we did that with one of our other engines. But it might have been the single carburetor eco rather than the dual. I am going to take a look at this. But we only have to go one direction since I know the timing is already advanced enough. That drops us by one horsepower and drops our efficiency as well. I didn't realize the two barrel carb would be fuel efficient like that. That's interesting. But with a single carburetor rather than a twin, not that big a deal. Oh, there we go. Also, if any of you have any questions, feel free to ask. I will go into more depth about certain things. I want to explain a little bit more this time of why I'm doing things.
We have our engine. I gotta remember what our nomenclature is. We have the I4 CC. It is a 82.8. 83 by 93. 83 by 93. Two valve. Overhead cam. We haven't built a single overhead cam. We've just had the direct acting overhead cams. This is a two liter standard making significantly more power. 87 was it? 87 horsepower. 20D87. Of course, it is version one. Okay, I'm happy with that. And we can, of course, try the new car with the other, one of our other engines. All right. Got everything. A3 by 93. Okay. Do you want it to be a sedan? Uh, looking at our spreadsheet, drivability, comfort, prestige, safety, practicality, size, off road reliability, fuel economy. No additional factors. But we want to keep it cheap three to $6,800. Thousand. Try to shrink it down. Maybe a mistake, and I may reverse that. I'll do the fixtures off camera. I can spend time looking at them. Ooh, interesting. Some of the morphs are. Very interesting. Don't get to raise that one. Did that already, did that already. And increase our cabin space a little by doing that. We'll leave it like this. I'll pick a paint later as well. Oh, we don't get a front wheel drive with this. I didn't realize that was a factor. It's certainly going to be one that I want to look at. Basic none, 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 standard. All right, I have an initial. Initially places it in a muscle market, so we may have overshot on the engine. We want a family vehicle. For the family vehicle, we want a top speed 106. We do want some overdrive. Not a ton. Actually, did I pass any tire cost multipliers? I forget to look for that. Because that tire cost multiplier is huge. And gear it for 120. Maybe a little bit further. Ooh, big jump. Ah, because the tire cost multiplier. There's where I'll set my mark. 
And you see the tire cost multiplier is 88.7% because it's a Q-type tire. Go to an N-type tire, 34.6% cost multiplier. And the uh, family jumps by like 2%. Two, two I don't want a manual, I know that already. Definitely want the automatic, a 104 wheel drive. I'm interested in the manual locker. Costs a bit though. We'll wait on that, make a decision later. Radials are expensive. But good on a lot of factors. Looking for some comfort. Comfort and drivability. A little bit of prestige won't go awry, neither will some safety. Definitely want some practicality. Material costs 2300 We might we're targeting the family, the family budget might use cross ply. That's what that turns into. Alright. I want small tires. More rubber. It's our max on this 650. Yeah, that rubber is expensive. Actually, the, the rim itself is more expensive than the rubber. And there's no change to the rubber. The rubber just uh, changes weight. Fairly narrow tires. Go with 150s maybe. And then we'll adjust everything else as necessary. Want the tires too small? It'll look silly. I'll do the 14 inch rim. Do the offset. In the rear too. Do we want to do a little bit less in the rear? Eh, it doesn't have too much of an effect on the drivability. I do want standardized tires. It'll be hard to make this more drivable. Get this in the ballpark though. Dallying around. Butting with everything. I don't want a softer pad. That's interesting. Definitely want more brake power. That's not surprising at all. Go with 240s, front and back. Two shoes on the front. And we'll just adjust as necessary. get that rear one to be where it needs to be. I might do some tweaking of that off camera. Get it to where it needs to be. Uh, we have pulling airflow, they're probably gonna want max. 
not selected. All I have is family. So we have cooling airflow. Do we have a uh, brake fade? Just a little bit. On the utility side, uh, we definitely want five seats, six in the f with the front bench, not desirable. Not really wanting a little bit of interior, they just want to keep it basic. Yeah. Driver aids, power steering, probably highly desirable despite the cost. Safety, probably also desirable. Despite the cost, I'll go full bore. And see, we've gotten some familiarity by doing the, uh, the Panda. We did advanced 50s with that. Uh, may lower it down. I'll look at that off screen as well. Impressive springs. A little bit more expensive. A little bit. A little bit more um, engineering time as well. Looking at it, we have a target budget of actually 3000 for budget. This actually comes in at about the cost for a budget, but with the tooling costs and all that, and what we are actually selling at, probably end up being what the family car could be. So, comfort, normal, sport, utility. Utility constantly puts us closest to where we need to be. Constantly. Not much roll angle. Service cost multiplier, 8.5. Oh, wow. That even lower. I don't want that much overdrive. We've seen what that looks like. Increase the performance until we hit Q again. Back to the suspension, and we'll wrap this up. I want to try to get the drivability peg to blue, whereas when you want maximum sportiness, you want to get the S peg up to red. Directly opposed to each other. No rear sway bar. I don't want too stiff of a spray bar. sway bar. Um, it seems really stiff. Could be wrong. Definitely don't need more. Want stiffer front, softer back. A little bit stiffer, not too stiff. And actually improve things a bit. Then we'll see if we can can't camber them. Got a. I'm going to admit my ignorance. I haven't almost most of my experience in the game is in the engine builder because that's what they initially released. For me, the car builder is still relatively new and I do not understand what limits your camber. Camber being um, how much the tire leans in and out. Um, like it this way. Get rid of the care about the chassis. There we go. Ah, body. Um camber is I'm gonna select that, go away. Camber is when the tire Basically, the top will lean out, 
and the bottom will lean in or vice versa to go the other way and um so a little bit of negative amber on the back tires it's common and you'll see sports cars or uh, tuner cars i should say out on the streets with very aggressive rear camber negative camber where the tires lean in uh, on the top and out on the bottom for the purposes of keeping the car stable the back end stable when under heavy acceleration that's the intent for that with how aggressive you see them do it it's for visual effect but you're getting into opinions at this point and uh, I don't want to say too much about that. But you put positive camber where the tire leans out on the front because as you go to turn, the car leans and it becomes the tire that has the most stress on it, which will be the outside tire on a turn. So if this car is turning to the left, the outside tire will be the right front that tire will end up being straight up and down ideally if the camber is perfect for that turn that bank that radius turn the weight transfer that the car has and there are a lot of factors that go into it camber is perfect this outside tire will be perfectly straight up and down and so the gripping patch that touches directly touches the ground will be the biggest and that's what will uh, help your turn times so that's that's kind of camber understand what camber is i don't understand what limits camber in this game so off camera i'll probably mess with tire diameter rim diameter maybe the offsets and the width to get some more clearance to be able to affect that camber some but with that we have gone a fairly long time and uh I don't want this episode to go too long, and I don't want to explain too much. I don't. A tutorial is a huge undergoing, and I don't want to get too deep into it. So with that, thank you for staying to the end. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a comment below. Let me know what you'd like to see more of, less of, and I'll see you next time. Take care.